Hello, and welcome to my presentation called Five Mistakes Devs Make in Test Automation. My name is Carlos Kidman, and I'm an engineering leader and test architect at Adobe. We got to cover five mistakes in five minutes, so let's just jump right in. The first mistake is probably the biggest one because it's the one that affects the people and culture, which is the base for everything else. Devs don't seek to understand testing or quality. Instead, they lean on their shallow understanding and previous bad experience, with the excuse, well, it's not my job, or I don't see the value of adding tests. However, the main problem here is that no one, including test managers, are truly leading testing and quality. The solution is to actually lead quality in the team or organization. You do this by creating an internal community so there is a safe space to educate, collaborate, and inspire each other. This community then allows a platform for devs, testers, and anyone else to ask questions, get answers, collaborate on problems, and bring visibility so everyone learns and grows together. This makes challenges much easier to overcome, like getting buy-in from upper management on a tool or strategy. The second mistake is testing only after development. So many opportunities are missed during business and design discussions. This leads to over-engineering and over-architecting. I see this problem time and time again where they want to design and diagram everything up front instead of testing, experimenting, and using concrete scenarios to drive it instead. Testing becomes shallow verification and checking instead of actual testing. Automation can't keep up because everything is reactive. There is no community in this approach, so silos are naturally built. As you can see, this doesn't sound very productive or efficient for the people on the team or the system. It's no wonder inexperienced devs see testing as a waste of time. You lose a ton of value from testing if it's done only after development. The solution is to use behavior-driven development, or BDD, and have that feed into test-driven development, or TDD. You can and should use both of them. Now, this does not mean that I'm recommending things like Cucumber or PyTest BDD. In fact, I don't like using those tools for test automation, to be honest. I also don't recommend a purest form of TDD because I prefer more practical and fluid forms of TDD. But I'll save that for another presentation unless you all want to talk about that in the Q&A. The point here is that the concepts behind BDD and TDD are powerful and promote communication and collaboration. BDD naturally brings the business, devs, and testers together, while TDD helps with the tactical design and implementation of the code using testability and tests. BDD and TDD are much better when pairing or ensembling with others, just like the idea of an internal community. Next up is that devs don't code or design for testability. I kind of covered this in the last slides, but I do want to point out a few things. This happens because things were designed through a nearsighted lens instead of a farsighted one. They only care about getting this feature or functionality deployed instead of also thinking about its longevity, reliability, and usage. Without proper testing and systems thinking, you are building every piece in complete isolation with very narrow inputs and outputs. This leads to exponentially adding tech debt. Each piece may seem simple, but once you plug it into a tightly coupled system, it gets that much harder to observe, test, and operate it. Eventually, you will need to test it, but then you realize how complicated the system has become and making it testable after the fact looks impossible. So the team usually turns to rewriting everything. The solution here is also BDD to TDD. Testability wouldn't be an issue if your design is driven by testing and the scenarios you want to cover. The next mistake is having no control of test data or environments. The first problem here is that it's difficult to run tests and experiments. Then, automated tests trip over each other since they're sharing the same data and environment. 
Let's not forget that multiple engineers might be developing on the same environment and their features are clashing with each other. Another problem is that you can't set up subsets of a system to test just that piece. So you have to spin up everything instead. I commonly see people say that they have quote unquote microservices, but they still have to spin every service up just to test anything. And lastly, no one really knows how things work together. There aren't any tests to document this, so the overall architecture is a black box. The solution is to start with the APIs. What are their behaviors and what are the contracts between them? Getting those covered with automated tests will create some powerful code that you can use for other types of tests and automation. The fifth and final mistake I'll talk about today is that most people on these cross-functional teams only think upstream. There's little to no ownership once the build passes continuous integration, aka CI. Since DevOps handles the rest, I don't need to do anything else. Oh, and they might add some monitoring, but no one on the team actually uses it themselves. In other words, their definition of done is seeing a green pipeline. Instead, care about the downstream. It's not true DevOps if devs and testers aren't part of the downstream. If you aren't sure what I mean by downstream, I recommend searching a few terms like observability, operability, and site reliability engineering. There is a lot more that happens in the downstream than many people realize. But there's a lot of testing and automation that happens there too. In fact, there is usually more testing and automation that happens downstream than upstream. Just think about that for a sec. All right, that's it. Here are the five mistakes again on a single slide in case you weren't able to write each one down. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a quality day.